Truzzi here with Chesterfield County Department of Parks and Recreation and today we are at Dodd Park at Point of Rocks, one of the earliest parks established here in Chesterfield County. Now for many people who have already discovered this park or have been here before, many people come here to enjoy a lot of the amenities that this park um, has here. Uh, they may, if they have young children, they may uh, come out here to our playground. Uh, they may have uh, rented one of our facility rentals that we have here at the park. Uh, or possibly, uh, if they are in league play, probably involved in using one of our baseball diamonds, uh, soccer fields, or uh, possibly now uh, pickleball or tennis that we have here at the park. But what many visitors may not realize here at Dodd Park is directly behind me and down below near um, the marsh, we have a lot of the original fortifications that were constructed here in 1864 by the Union Army as part of the Bermuda 100 campaign here in Chesterfield County, which began in early May of 1864. And during our tour today, I will be sharing with all of you a lot of the original aspects of those fortifications that still exist here and uh, many of the other elements that aren't here now played a crucial role for the Union Army when they invaded here in early May with close to 38,000 troops. Now some of the components of the fortifications that still exist here today uh, are right off here in the far corner of the main parking lot here at Dodd Park. Uh, this small segment of earthen mounds was once part of what was known as an artillery redan, which would have been a three-sided earthen wall which would have protected a small artillery position here. Uh, and this would have been the only segment that was actually preserved here when the park was created uh, and gives the visitors a, uh, an idea of what would have been here. Uh, off to the right of where this artillery redan uh, existed, along the fence line here and tree line are some of the original Union fortifications. And these loop all the way around. When you drive into the main park and you pass the tennis courts and drive a little further to this point here, directly hugging the road right behind the, tr the tree lines here are all of the original Union fortifications. Uh, and these earthen mounds uh, loop all the way around here in the park. And when the Union Army um, got to this point here in early May, close to three miles of fortifications were constructed in this area here. And this park actually became the headquarters for Major General Benjamin Butler, commander of the Army of the James. And his troops would have been working on constructing these lines of fortifications, many of which we are going to have a chance to see today. Okay, so we are now down on the lower portion of the main trail here at Dodd Park and uh, getting close to Ashton Creek Marsh. Uh, as you walk down the trail here, uh, to your left, you'll see other segments of the uh, remnants of these fortifications. And while there were main fortifications or earthworks built on the top side, right where visitors park, when you come down here, you see a second line of fortifications. Now, these would have looped uh, all the way down here uh, below and would have run parallel to the marsh and these would have been a second line of defense for the Union troops that would have been stationed here. And in May of 1864, when the Army of the James landed here, uh, they had uh, the 10th and the 18th Corps, and close to 38,000 troops would be stationed all through this region here of Chesterfield County. And as visitors walk down the trail here, they will have an opportunity to see many segments of these fortifications. Some of these lines are still close to about five to six feet in height and are very impressive. Uh, these lines here are a little bit more denuded and eroded over the course of time, uh, but still they are very prevalent even today with all the vegetation growing on top. 
Now as visitors walk down along the trail, very close to the Ashton Creek Marsh, uh, they're going to be able to spot some much larger sections of these Union fortifications. And this small little section that is shaped like a U and then continues with this long straight uh, section here is probably one of the best preserved sections of these federal fortifications that exist here at the park today. And just like the ones topside, uh, these would have been defended by federal troops. Um, from this position here, looking straight ahead, they would have a great view over the Ashton Creek Marsh and be able to uh, keep better eye on any um, enemy troop movements. Uh, and should these lines had been uh, assaulted by Confederate forces, these tall earthen mounds would have provided ample protection for not only the infantry, but also the artillery positions that are down here. And we'll have a chance uh, shortly to actually see where one of the artillery positions actually would have been stationed during that time period. Now, down here on Ashton Creek Marsh, one of the most intriguing engineering feats that was performed here was the construction of this small little path that runs all the way across the marsh. And this was actually a causeway that was actually constructed here in late May 1864 by troops under General William Smith. Now they built this bridge and causeway across the mouth of Ashton Creek here and this allowed uh, a point of access for the Union troops from this point behind their lines to access Port Walthall, which is near close just beyond present day Colonial Heights. Uh, and that uh, railroad crossing there would have allowed them to uh, do reconnaissance and get better information on Confederate troop strength that they would be actually facing. And on May 26th, General John Martindale with the 148th New York Volunteers took his uh, unit and crossed this causeway as part of a reconnaissance uh, and a section of the causeway directly in front of us still actually exists today. Uh, this um, action in late May actually led to some fierce fighting and actually resulted in casualties both for the Union and Confederate forces. Uh, this mission actually was going to alert the Confederate forces to the position of the Union troop strength over here on this side of the marsh. Uh, and the Union forces that were stationed here would be on guard awaiting for a Confederate counter assault utilizing this causeway that never really came. Uh, and the Union troops had a sizable advantage over their Confederate counterparts uh, throughout the entire Bermuda 100 campaign, but this section of the line was never truly tested. Uh, this remnant of the causeway today is closed to foot traffic, but the visitors who um, have a chance to explore uh, the park here will have an opportunity to actually see this uh, unique section. Now as visitors uh, walk the trail here um, and they'll come out to this opening by the Ashton Creek Marsh, they'll observe this very nice observation tower and uh, standing on top of that really gives the visitors a better viewpoint across the marsh here. But more importantly, where this tower uh, platform sits today, this would have been the location of one of the artillery positions. Uh, this would have been part of Ashby's battery and a series of small uh, ordnance pieces would have been um, connected here uh, and right on top of the main uh, fortification line. And from this vantage point here, they would have had a excellent view right across the Ashton Creek Marsh. And uh, for visitors today, when they actually uh, come down here and they stand on that platform, they will have an opportunity to get a much better view across the marsh here and at that point, 150 some years ago, all of these trees would have been gone and they would have had a clear field of fire, an excellent view to um, 
uh, be able to ascertain any Confederate assault coming across uh, from the other side of the peninsula here to uh, present-day uh, Dodd Park. And for visitors who explore here, provides a variety of abundance of opportunities, not only for nature, but also to uh, enjoy the history here at the park. So when visitors um, have a chance to access the main trailhead here at Dodd Park, right, right next to the playground, uh, they'll find a series of new Civil War interpretive signs that were funded by the Blue and Gray Education Society, which uh, we were able to fund well over 40 of these new signs uh, that were added at a variety of the sites here. And uh, these really talk a lot about the Bermuda 100 campaign and provide uh, a lot of great information for our uh, visitors here uh, to focus on uh, the campaign itself with some great maps, uh, storylines on some of the commanders here, uh, both Union and Confederate. And this particular site here would have marked the headquarters of Major General Benjamin Butler and the Confederate uh, uh, opposing forces would not have been very far from this position here and on early May of 1864 uh, Butler landed here with close to 38,000 troops at Bermuda 100 which is just a short drive down the road from where we are here at Dodd Park and those troops march from Bermuda 100 less than about four miles from here up to this location and literally cleared all of the trees that exist here today and started to construct these lines of fortifications that the visitors have a chance to experience and explore when they visit the park today. We're gonna to have a chance to uh, tie in a couple other unique uh, attributes that were part of this site here when the Union Army occupied this area in May of 1864. Now as visitors drive around to exit Dodd Park here, they will notice this enormous soccer field complex off on the right hand side, adjacent from the ball diamonds. And visitors would have no way of knowing, there's not really any interpretive signage over here, but this entire large field where the soccer goalposts exist today was all part of a large Union garrison, a fort known as Fort Zabriskie. Uh, and actually covered this entire area that you see in front of you today. Uh, this fort was named for Colonel Abram Zabriskie of the 9th New Jersey Volunteers. Colonel Zabriskie was killed at the Second Battle of Drury's Bluff on May 16, 1864. Uh, and this entire complex here would have been retrofitted with a lot of defensive measures here uh, for uh, entrance uh, and exit for the troops here. Uh, and this area sat on the high ground overlooking the Appomattox River and Ashton Creek Marsh. So this site, along with Butler's headquarters, played a enormous part in the contribution uh, for the Army of the James when they established their operations at this area here. Uh, and coming up from Ashton Creek Marsh to this site here gives the visitors a better understanding and appreciation for being on the high ground and what this area actually would have looked like. Now, just beyond Fort Zabriskie, uh, off to our right, uh, just beyond this large weeping willow tree would have stood another unique component that was here in 1864. The Union Army constructed a large observation tower that was 110 feet tall. Now this tower was actually used by General Butler to actually do reconnaissance uh, and get a better idea of enemy troop movements. Uh, this signal tower was a prominent feature here that has been seen in the background of many original photographs taken in the area near and at the end of the war. And this tower was used to observe the James River and send communications to troops north of the James and south of the Appomattox. In 1864, after Union troops landed here and sat, established their communications and base of operations and the first battles ensued, 
Confederate artillery batteries shelled this tower. Over 90 rounds were fired at this particular location, but none actually hit the tower. Uh, some shells did land very close to the base and threw dirt and debris up to the top layer of this tower here. Um, President Lincoln actually visited this site uh, in March of 1865, uh, less than two weeks before the war would officially conclude. And for visitors who explore Dodd Park, it uh, gives them an opportunity to really take in a lot of the unique components that some are still here today and are visible, but these two items here that no longer exist played a very important part for the Union Army's occupation of this particular site.